So let's start implementing our object language. And here is our full curly with objects. And let's look at some examples. So we saw an example similar to this. This is an object with an x and y field and a Manhattan distance method uh, where we're calling that method. And just to make this a little more clear, here is some analogous Java code. So this corresponds to creating an instance of a class that has x and y fields, has an mdis method uh, that uses this.x and this.y to access the fields. Of course, in Java, you don't have to write this dot here uh, for these cases, but you can write it, and uh, we're making it explicit in our syntax with get this. Here's a bigger example. Here I've got an object with a mdis method and also an addDis method, which is going to take another point as its argument um, and add the distances for that point and this point. Uh, and if we ha have that object, then we can call it addDis method with this other object that has an mdis method. And that would be similar to having uh, a posin 3 d class here that has an addDis method that takes another posin to call its mdis method, and so on. And you see we've got uh, z added here in this subclass into the x and y that we had before. We don't have a notion of classes and subclasses yet, but we can get the same sort of argument by just listing all of the fields that we want. To represent this grammar, then, we're going to have the usual sort of expression data type, where we have nummy plus e multi. That is, this is familiar. We don't have IDE. Uh, in general, we don't have let bindings or lambdas with arbitrary names. What we have is arg and this. So we can just make those two designated expression forms. We have object expressions, where we have fields and methods. Both fields and methods pair a symbol for the name of the field or method with an expression for the fields expression or the methods body expression. Again, the arg argument to a method is implicit. And then we have get e and send e. So get e takes an expression and a field, and send e takes an object expression, a method name, and the argument expression. We're going to have two kinds of values plain old numbers, just to make examples easier, and also objects. So objects have fields and methods. Um, this is similar to the uh, expression data type, but of course in an object, when you, when you have a value at runtime, then you've evaluated the field expressions to get just values. The method expressions, however, are still delayed because you don't evaluate the method expression until the method is called. Note that we have an expression without an environment. That's because we don't have environments. We don't have nested closures, uh, so we don't need environments here. Anything that we would want to capture would be in the fields of an object. Looking at some examples of interp, if we interp a plus e of 1 and 2, then of course we expect a num b3. That much will be the same. If we have a, an object e expression and we interpret, then we should get an object value back. Um, and if we have an empty set of fields and methods, then we should have an empty set of fields and methods in the resulting object value. On the other hand, if we have an object v which does have some fields and methods, so here I've got an x field with an initialization expression that adds 1 and 2, and I've got an increment method which takes its argument and adds 1 to it. That produces an object value which has fields where the initialization expressions have been evaluated, but the methods are just like they were in the object expression. Still has the same name, still has the same expression, not yet evaluated. If we take that same object expression and wrap it with a get e expression, where we will have a name of a field to get, then we will evaluate the object e to that object v, and then we will look in that object e for the x field, and we will have already evaluated the plus 1, 2 to a 3. So get will just need to fetch the 3 out of the object value. Uh, if we make uh, a method call with send e, uh, then we'll have an argument expression that will need to get evaluated, and then we will need to do something like when we did function calls before, except it's a little simpler, because we just have to start evaluating this expression with arg meaning uh, num v7. And then when we have a, a num v7 plus a 1, we'll get an 8. But how exactly will this expression know what arg is, since we don't have environments anymore? Uh, look at it more concretely, if we're just interpreting the plus e expression uh, and we have an argy, where do we get the value for the argy? We don't in fact have enough information with interp as we set it out. We don't need to go to environments because the only two forms we have that would look at names are arg and this, so what we can do is change interp to take an arg value and a this value. So we will have our new interp 
uh, for the object-oriented curly, we'll take an expression and two values. This is the value for this, which should always be an object, and this is the value for arg, which can be anything. And then, of course, interp should return a value. So, to resume that earlier example, when we do plus e arg of num e1, um, we combine that with a value for this, which is, say, an empty object. Um, this and, uh, you know, this won't happen because we can't call a method on an empty object, but we could jump into the middle of this constructed uh, expression. And num v7 here is acting as the argument. So when we evaluate arg e, we will use that argument value, which is num v7, and that's how we eventually get to 8. Here's another example where I'm using get on this. So get this x should give me the value of the x field, and this will work out as long as the this that I pass into interp is an object that has fields, and one of which is named x. So in this case, we would get uh, x from this object, and that's how we end up with 9. The arg value in this expression is ignored. And finally, if our whole program is just plus 1, 2, uh, like we're, this is kind of like being at the main part, we're not in a method anymore, we'll still have to provide some dummy object and some dummy argument. Uh, the expression shouldn't use it if it's outside of a method, but to make interp consistent we'll have to pass something in. So we'll just pass in an empty object and the number 0.